One of these three young men is a modern-day Rip Van Winkle. What is your name, please? My name is Alan Young. My name is Alan Young. My name is Alan Young. Only one of these young men is the real Alan Young. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, <laughs> Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you and welcome once again to the Tell the Truth. Good evening, Carl. Good evening, Bud. Everybody bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Well. <laughs> Very bushy-tailed. <laughs> We're brought to you tonight by Woolite, the cold water wash that safely soaks sweaters clean in just three minutes without stretching, without shrinking. All right, Pan, you may open up your envelope, if you will, please, and follow along with me as I read this first story. I, Alan Young, recently spent 30 days in bed. I wasn't sick. I was just one of 14 guinea pigs in a controlled experiment conducted under the auspices of the National Aeronautic and Space Administration. The purpose was to determine how astronauts will react to long periods of inactivity on future space trips. During my month in bed, I was permitted to read books, watch TV, play cards, and board games, provided, of course, I never lifted my head from the pillow. The doctors found that as long as I did certain exercises from a prone position, I was not significantly affected by the test. The whole experiment came to be known as Operation Sack Time. Signed, Alan Young. <laughs> These three young men all claim to be Alan Young, who holds the degree of OSGP, Operation Sack Time Guinea Pig. We start the questioning with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Uh, number two, how did you play cards if you didn't take your head off the pillow? We played off the floor. We both leaned over the end of the bed and played off the floor. That was our table. Oh, you didn't have to keep, you could kind of loll your head over the side of the bed. Right. Uh, number three, how many people were in this experiment in bed? Fourteen. Fourteen people. I see. Uh, number one, uh, how did you feed yourself prone? Did, I mean, like, you know, would it fall off by the time you got it to your mouth? Oh, uh, we could turn over on our stomach, slide off the end of the bed oh. that way. Hot dog. <laughs> Very good. Uh, number two, how long do they expect these people to be inactive? How long would it say would an astronaut have to be inactive? I guess 30 days, 15 uh, days to the moon and 15 days back. It's a short walk in between. <laughs> or some beans. Number one, uh, if we ever get to go to uh, Jupiter or Venus or any of them good places, I'm told that people will have to stay in the spaceship for months. Now, will you, do you, do you, did you, uh, what will you do about Dowager's hump and other things like that? <laughs> terrible things can happen to you if you have to lay around all that time. You didn't, uh, do you think it'll work, I mean? Uh, I don't know. 30 days was kind of bad. That was enough time for you, huh? I don't know. Number three, what did you watch on TV? We watched all the afternoon shows, soap operas and things like that in the evening. We watched the uh, Password and, and things. To Tell the, the Truth. To Tell the Truth, one of our favorite shows. <laughs> no prompting. <laughs> Kitty. Number two, uh, why were you chosen for this experiment? Are you normally a, a, a long sleeper? Uh, yes, I am, but uh, we volunteered. Where do you come from, number three? I come from California. Well, I mean, what, how were you chosen? Well, this was an experiment done by, uh, I go to the University of Stanford, <laughs> and this was an experiment done by Stanford University students during the summer. Uh, for the space? That's uh, right, yeah. I see. Um, and number one, where was this done? Uh, at my college in Texas. Oh, you're in Texas? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, and number two, there were 14 of you? Right. Did you notice any change in your body? Uh, uh, did you sleep at night at all? Uh, yes, we did. Number three, did you have trouble sleeping? No, not too much. Eight Tom to ten Poston. Nine. Uh, uh, number two, how many were involved in this experiment with, with you? Where did you do your experiment, by the way, number two? University of Southern California. How many were in the experiment with you? Fourteen. And number three? Fourteen. Number one? Fourteen. All at your universities, I take it. Oh, I see. I thought we were there, scattered around all over the place. 
Uh, number three, how much physical activity did you do? Did you ever work up a sweat? Did you ever break a sweat? Yes, I did. That was we recommended? Can... Yes, it was. We, some of us had different exercises. There were four on each different exercise, and two had uh, pressure breathing. The exercise that we had was with an elastic device stretching it up over our heads. And that's all the time we have. So, stretch a few points and mark your balance, if you will, panel. Mark them at once, of course, without change, without consultation. Just simply vote now for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will receive $250, of course, for each and every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? No, I didn't mark No, them. not yet. Uh... Uh, right, uh, now I they are, yeah. and Tom, for whom did you vote? I heard somebody say one, and I said, yeah, you're probably right, but I voted for number three. He was really the only one I got to talk to. <laughs> Peggy Cat. You know, Willie looks kind of sleepy, but I voted for number three because he looks so wide awake, and after all that sleep, why shouldn't he? <laughs> Carson Bean. Well, it's probably one. Uh, I mean, I don't... I mean, it's probably three, because no one would make up that they would watch soap operas. I mean, they know... <laughs> uh, but I, on a, I, I, I... At the last minute, I changed my mind and voted for one, because I felt like three was giving us too much information. You know, Kitty. anxious to prove. I voted for number three, because I don't know how long ago this experiment took place, but he looks a little heavier than the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd gain some weight if you were in bed for 30 days. I know I would, although I'd love to do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there we have it. All tied up in a knot and all votes in and all minds made up and reasons given. Let's find out now. Which one of these young men, in truth, could be called Operation Sack Time Guinea Pig? Will the real Alan Young please stand up? Oh, ah! Incidentally, Alan is a senior and a member of the varsity basketball team at the University of Southern California. <laughs> so uh, no extra weight on him, no matter what. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, my name is James Horn and I distribute tickets for television shows. <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, fatso? <laughs> I'm really hurt by that. My name is Steve Thurlow and I'm a halfback for the New York Giants. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I wanted Kitty to see who she was saying had gained a lot of weight. <laughs> well, gentlemen, you did a beautiful job tonight. Pulled him right down the line, and of course, that means four incorrect votes, four times $250 or $1,000 coming to you. And of course, on your way out, you'll also receive a gift package from the makers of Woolite. We thank you very much for brightening our evening and giving us as much fun as we hope you had, too. Good night, and God bless you. Okay, panel, take a minute while we look at this brief film. Meet our next team of challengers. Hi. What is your name, please? My name is Muriel Davis Grossfeld. My name is Muriel Davis Grossfeld. My name is Muriel Davis Grossfeld. Panel, follow along with your copies of this one. I, Muriel Davis Grossfeld, am a gymnast. I am currently touring the country, giving exhibitions and conducting clinics in exercise and proper diet as part of a program known as Club 15. Specifically, I address myself to the majority of young American girls who, after the age of 13, start to lose their attractive vitality and muscle tone and become flabby as a result of inactivity and improper diet. I am well qualified to conduct the Club 15 program. I am on the clinic staff of the President's Council on Physical Fitness, a former national all-around gymnastic champion, and was a member of three United States Olympic teams. Signed, Muriel Davis Grossfeld. <laughs> Well, 
three young ladies all claim to be Muriel Davis Grossfell, champion gymnast. Let's start this cross-examination with our own gymnast, Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, bud. <clears throat> well, congratulations, whoever you are, because I have a 14-year-old daughter at home, and I've been campaigning for a long time. Do you believe in all kinds of uh, sweet snacks, number three, after school? No, I don't. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your kid is listening. <laughs> you better had be. Number two, uh, do you believe in gymnastics or in ordinary exercise? Gymnastics. Number one, what can you do with gymnastics as you grow older, however? I mean, if you don't have the bars and things to do, can you translate this into ordinary life? Well, floor exercise is part of gymnastics. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, you know, in the gymnastic uh, competition with the Olympics, they always have the, uh, the well, you work alone at your own choreography on this giant mat to music. What's that called? That called floor exercise. Uh, is, do, do, is it number two, is it called the same for fellas as for girls? Free X, the floor exercise. Uh, who does the uh, choreograph choreographing of those uh, particular dance dances that you do, number two? Well, there are two routines during the Olympi Olympics. One's compulsory the first day, and they give you the routine. And the second day is optional. And that you do yourself. Peggy Cass. Thank you. And number three, have you heard of the drinking man's diet? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh. Well, it's a boy. It's well. Number two, have you heard of the Air Force diet? I try them all. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what is the what is the the theory behind the Air Force diet? What number? Number two. She heard of it. <laughs> yes. Um, it's called the drinking man's diet, also. <laughs> And you eat carbohydrates mainly. And while, while drinking, uh, I'm not too sure about it. I've heard of it. I think the drinking, the alcohol, eats up the carbohydrates. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what that thought. <laughs> now, <laughs> and number one, who's Bonnie Pruden? Uh, 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 she's on television. She uh, does athletics. Orson Bean. Yes, number one again, who's Jack LaLanne? He's on television. <laughs> number three, who was once a 97-pound weakling? <laughs> Uh, Charles, Charles Atlas? Or? Yes, number two. Who used to get sand kicked in his face at the beach? <laughs> no, me. I didn't want to go into it. Uh, <laughs> okay, the time is all gone now. Without sand in your eyes, mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without change, without any consultation whatsoever. Betwixt yourselves. <laughs> Vote for number one. Number two. Our number three. All ballots marked, panel? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I, I voted for number three, and I must say, uh, we didn't ask any of those ladies what that giant bar is doing. <laughs> <for them. laughs> and I, I was watching them bring it in with the greatest curiosity, and once the girls came, I guess they're so pretty, we didn't pay any attention. Thank you, Kat. Well, I voted for number one because uh, number two said it was lots of carbohydrates. No carbohydrates on the drinking Air Force diet. <laughs> the drinking Air Force. So I voted for number one. Orson Bean. Yes, well, they're all fine, healthy girls and a credit to their race. And we'll really beat the Russians to the moon if we have ladies like that. I voted for number three because, uh, uh <laughs> she's a fine, healthy girl. Kitty <laughs> Carlisle. <laughs> I voted for number one because number two said they have carbohydrates on that diet, and I think it's the opposite. And number two said they call those exercises floor exercises, and I think it has a more technical name, which perhaps she didn't remember, but I voted for number one. All right, well, that splits it evenly down the middle. Two for number one, two for number three. Let's find out immediately which one of these young ladies is, in truth, the champion gymnast. Muriel Davis Grossfeld has consented to give us a demonstration on this four inch wide balance beam that's called so will the real muriel davis grossfeld please stand up and come out and perform for us <laughs> young lady, the field is yours. That's rosin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Rosin on her feet and her slippers and chalk, is that on your hands? <laughs> mm. 
So very, very much. I know you're glad it's over, <laughs> but it was a beautiful and thrilling exhibition. Thank, Thank you. You. Uh, you other two girls want to go out and do the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Morna Murphy, and I'm a secretary at Alto Sound Studios. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Ginny Demansky, and I work at Chuck's Composite. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, Muriel Davis Grossfeld's Club 15 program is sponsored as a public service by the Campbell Soup Company. So we're awful glad we got a real sample. Believe me, it was delicious. <laughs> in checking the score, we found that, of course, that there were two incorrect ones, and those are the ones you're most interested in, because that's twice $250, or $500 you get to divide. On your way out, you will also, of course, receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Woolite. We thank you again and again for being with us and making this such a happy evening. Good night, and God bless you. Let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Andrew Charles. My name is Andrew Charles. My name is Andrew Charles. Once again, follow along, if you will, panel. I, Andrew Charles, was the organizer and tour chief for a caravan of 47 travel trailers that just completed an unparalleled voyage around the world. The tour was sponsored by Wally Byam Caravans, a national organization which has been conducting trailer tours and rallies since the early 1950s. Our rallies attract as many as 2,000 families and their trailers, which assemble in orderly formation in a huge field. We started our world tour by shipping our two-ton trailers to Singapore. We pushed through the mud and monsoons of Malaysia and Thailand, climbed to the roof of the world in Nepal, picked our way along the teeming roads of India, negotiated the Khyber Pass, and crossed the deserts of the Middle East. We toured Europe on both sides of the Iron Curtain and finally shipped our trailers home from Spain. Our around-the-world trailer caravan took 403 days and covered a total of 34,000 miles. Signed, Andrew Charles. <laughs> Charles, leader of an around-the-world trailer caravan. We'll start this one with uh, Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, do you uh, know the first line in the song, King of the Road? <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Do you know number two? No, sir, I don't. Number one? No, I don't. Well, it's uh, trailer for sale or rent. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> this is a great song. Ding, 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 ding. Number two, what is your experience uh, uh, that they qualified you to be a tour chief for this particular uh, tour? I've been working with trailers since 1951. Uh, is, number one, is that all you required? No, there's a good bit of experience gained by rallies held around the country and uh, roundups of trailer drivers. Peggy Cash. Thank you. Number three, uh, did families live on board these trailers, or did just one person? Families. Uh, uh, number two, uh, did you have young children aboard? Uh, yes, we had young children. As a matter of fact, our youngest was 18 months. Thank you. Uh, number three, how did you manage uh, the carnets? Well, you had to get them before you left. And number one, how many carnets did it take? Oh, one, one twenty six. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. One carnet would take for each person, for each <laughs> driver, for each caravan. Thank you. Uh, 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 number two, 
Uh, did you use American gas? Uh, no, we, we use gas from the uh, local economies. They, and number three, did a... Orson Bean. Yes, sir. Uh, number th uh, three, uh, how about food? Did you carry all your own food with you? Just staples. You bought the food in the local market. Number one, I keep seeing trailers with uh, peony bush in the front yard and ivy all over them, and it looks like they've been there for 30 years. Why is that? I mean, why would people live in a trailer and stay there for 20 years? Well, you're speaking of mobile homes. Yeah, well, they ain't mobile, to. though. They even take the wheels off of them. <laughs> All right, I don't know what I really wanted to find out. Number two, uh, how could you find enough... Oh, Gene Rayburn has been having trouble with a frozen septic tank. <laughs> what, what can you... Did you have that? You, you climbed in Nepal to the roof of the world. Did your septic tank freeze up? Uh, no, because uh, we have heat in the trailers, too, and we get in the cold uh, climates, we had heat. Oh, so well, anyway. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I wish you'd take me on one of these tours. It sounds divine. Number three, how much did it cost? From um, 10000 up to $18,000. Per, 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 per trailer? Per family, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, why did it vary? Um, depended upon the length of the trailer. I see. Thank you. Number two, where is Kathmandu? That's the, I believe that's the capital of uh, Nepal. And number one, what was the most terrible thing that happened to you? The most terrible thing is the time has run out. So we have to mark our ballots now. If you will please do so without any further information, simply vote. Vote now and without consultation for number one, number two, or number three. Ballots are not quite all marked. Now they are. With, all right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three because I wasn't satisfied with the other two answers about the experience that enabled them to do this, and I didn't get to ask number three, so. Peggy, which one do you think it is? Well, I voted for number two. A carne is a little piece of paper you give when you're going from one country to the other to the customs, <coughs> and you couldn't get through on one. I ran out of them just in Europe. Number two said something about 20, he was 26 up, so I think it was him. <laughs> Orson B. Well, number two said Kathmandu is the capital of Nepal, and that sounds right to me, so I voted for him. I voted for number one because he looked like the youngest and the strongest. It seems to me that you'd have to have an awful lot of strength to do a thing like that. Do another football so, for the New York <laughs> So there we have it with the votes all into the minds made up, and we have an equal division here. Now, one for number one, two for number two, one for number three. Let's find out now which one of these three gentlemen, in truth, is the leader of an around-the-world trailer caravan. Will the real Andrew Charles, please. Stand up. <laughs> Incidentally, Andrew Charles is chairman of the board of Airstream Trailers. Is that correct, sir? Mm -hmm. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is George Migdon, and I'm a specification writer for architect Edward Durrell Stone. got most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Charles Franks and I'm a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force. <laughs> well, gentlemen, in taking the score, you did extremely well. There were three incorrect votes at $250 each. That's a total of $750 to divide, and that will divide very easily three ways. Also, on your way out, you will receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Woolite. We hope you will look back upon your visit to our show as a happy one, possibly not as varied as taking one of your caravans throughout the world, but I hope it was fun. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye, and God bless you. Right now, let's take time out for a brief film. Back in a minute. We have time for tonight, but it was a night filled with variety and beauty as well. Good night to you, panel. Good night, Good night Brad. Good night to all of you. Good night for Woolite. And of course, we'll be joining you, and we trust you'll be joining us one week from tonight at the same time, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime show. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. <laughs> Oh, 
on CBS. The Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by a new Arrow Wax with Jet Age Plastic for the tough, long-lasting shine that never yellows. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program was recorded.